and welcome everyone. I thought it would be good today to read the Lakota prayer. Sundance is on currently and just been thinking a lot about some of my friends that are part of the Sundance. Oh, great spirit, whose voice I hear in the wind, whose breath gives life to the world, hear me. I come to you as one of your many children. I am small and weak. I need your strength and wisdom. May I walk in beauty. Make my eyes behold the red and purple sunset. Make my hands respect the things that you have made and my ears sharp to hear your voice. Make me wise so that I may know the things that you have taught your children, the lessons that you have hidden in every leaf and rock. Make me strong, not to be superior to my brothers, but to be able to fight my greatest enemy, myself. Make me ever ready to come to you with straight eyes so that when life fades as a faded sunset, my spirit will come to you without shame. Translated by Lakota Sioux Chief Yellow Lark in 1887. Um, our next panelist is Graham Gardner, uh, who is a professional dowser and geomancer coming to us from Scotland today. Um, he specializes in house healing work involving empathic and uh, technopathic stress and the creation of sacred spaces. He is an honorary life member and past president of the British Society of Dowsers from 2008 to 2014 and is a recipient of the prestigious BSD award for exceptional services to dowsing and the society. He is also a founder member of the Geomancy Group. His latest book, Dowsing Magic Book Two, From Grumpy Gnomes to Healthy Homes, is available from his website. And he lives in Glasgow, Scotland, and is contacted via his website. With that, Graham, I will turn it over to you. OK, thank you. Uh, now, in case you're wondering, this is not Scotland behind me. This is um, Cornwall, actually. <laughs> Just a nice picture. Uh, yeah, Scotland is uh, pretty dark by now. It's uh, coming up for 20 past 10 in the evening here. So, But great to be able to join um, you know, through this medium of Zoom uh, across the, the planet and be with you all. Um, you know, technology is really quite something these days, I think. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about um, one of the big hazards that's facing us, and that, that's the uh, proliferation we're finding in microwave technology, uh, in particular 5G. Uh, and when you mention 5G, everybody, you know, there is a, this instinctive fear reaction in the gut. Everybody goes, you know, oh my God, 5G is really bad. Uh, but, you know, um, my aim is to try and just give a little perspective and a little education on uh, the, whole, the whole scene. I don't think it's all bad. Like if I ask you now, now that we're in the world of 4G, can you do without your cell phone? How many would say yes? Not many, I think. So 5G is really just a bit more of the same, but it's a lot more of the same. And that's where the dangers lie. So um, just go through some quick basics first. Um, here's the electromagnetic spectrum, which we're all pretty used to, I guess. Um, Where's my laser pointer? So this bit here, the visible light, is uh, where this is everything we can see. It's just in this small gap here. Um, and it's divided roughly into two sections. We have the non-ionizing radiation down this end and ionizing radiation above uh, the visible light. Ionizing radiation means that the radiation will knock particles off the, the atoms in your body. So this is like, you know, heavy duty stuff. It causes genetic damage. Non-ionizing radiation, they say, has no effects like that. So therefore it is not um, harmful. Now down the bottom end here, we've got our broadcast frequencies, the uh, wireless uh, radio televisions and so on. Then into the microwave region, we have our mobile phones, our cordless phones in the house, our Wi-Fi routers and our smart meters. 
this terahertz band is largely untapped at the moment, but this is where the interest lies at the moment. This is where you have these new airport body scanners that you can see through your clothing. We'll talk a bit more about this uh, later on. Uh, then either side of the visible light, we've got our uh, infrared for our television remote controls, uh, sunbeds in the ultraviolet. And then moving up, we have the soft x-rays that you find in airports, hard x-rays and medical scanning. And then we're into gamma rays and cosmic rays and real high frequency, very damaging stuff. So we're interested in this band here. Uh, this is what we're trying to exploit just now for the new um, uh, phone frequencies just because the, the wavelength is getting so congested. I'll give you a quick uh, run through on the radio frequency stuff here. Uh, we're talking here the pulsed microwave radiation, and it's the fact that it's digitally pulsed that causes the problems. Uh, and this is from our cell phones, our Wi-Fi, cordless phones in the house, games consoles, Bluetooth, and 5G. Um, and we can see how radiation penetrates the brain of a child here compared to a, uh, an adult. Uh, so we know this is pretty damaging stuff. This graph shows you the increase in urban areas of um, artificial microwave radiation uh, from 2000 up to 2010. And this green line here is the maximum recommended safe level uh, that was set by a, a bunch of scientists in the Bioinitiative report in 2012. And, you know, we're already way off the end of the scale here. And uh, because these are pulse microwaves, uh, they have different effects. Uh, on a physiological level, they stimulate the, uh, the cells in our body. Like in the little video here, you can see the, the cilia, the hairs in the cells. Um, you know, their job is to keep fluid moving and uh, allow the cells to release their toxins. And they do this at night when we're sleeping. Uh, but because they're getting this constant pulsing all the time, they're not able to do that. So toxins build up within the cell and over a period of time, you know, this becomes uh, more chronic. And uh, all these um, areas here are where toxic effects have been uh, uh, observed. Um, they increase the blood-brain barrier permeability, which means calcium escapes and gets into the spaces between the cells. So they think this is a cause to uh, significant degenerative uh, diseases like um, Alzheimer's, uh, ALS, Parkinson's. Many people complain of headaches, dizziness, tremors, poor memory and sleep disturbance, uh, even visual disturbances. Um, I saw an interesting report just this week in Scientific American uh, where they've done some tests to show that cell phone radiation causes an increase in alpha waves you know, the alpha waves are what the brain produces when we're in a light meditative state or when we're just about to fall asleep. So this may be a good thing, you think. Um, but they also noticed they created a decrease in delta waves. And those are the waves that we uh, generate when we're asleep. So basically, your phone is putting you into a meditative zombie-like state, but it's keeping you awake. Wow. Uh, psychological effects, uh, these pulse frequencies are very close to some of our natural brainwave frequencies. So this is why we get this, uh, these this insomnia, depression and fuzzy thinking. You know, this is uh, what they, they do. And we're just talking uh, everyday microwaves here that we have in the 3G and 4G stuff. In the old days, when we had the analog signal uh, on the old phones, we get to pull out the aerial. Uh, it's very easy to determine the average because it's halfway between the, the peak wave and the, um, uh, the, the middle of the wave. So it's halfway between the, the wavelength here and there's a small difference. In the digital ones, uh, there's such a large difference between the, the peak and the base level and large gaps in between the pulses. So when you calculate the average level, it's way down here where the green line is. Uh, but the peaks can be 100 times higher than that in some cases, or even more. So, but you can guess that, uh, you know, the government bases the, the safety level on this average level, not, not the peak ones. Uh, let me just run you through the uh, evolution of the phones very quickly. Uh, first generation, 1G, we basically made phone calls. Uh, this is the, the first mobile I had, it was one of the Motorola's. Uh, second generation stuff, I'm sure you all had one of these. This allows us to send text messages and play Snake, of course. Um, uh, these all had a frequency of 800 megahertz, thereabouts. Then we got uh, 3G, 4G. 3G allowed us to do picture messaging and access the internet. 
uh, 4G allowed faster access, more bandwidth, and allowed us to stream videos and music. And the frequency gets into a higher band between 800 megahertz and 2.1 gigahertz. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot I left this one in here. Uh, this is an interesting one released by the French agency on the SAR levels, which is the specific absorption rate that stands for. Um, and this just shows you how scary it is when you have your phone close to your body instead of in your pocket. Um, this is uh, one of the things I'm always telling my clients, you know, don't keep your phone in your pocket or in your bra or, uh, you know, uh, gents, especially in your trouser pocket and ladies, especially not in your bra, because this is the difference you get in the levels of radiation. And of course, the uh, mobile phone companies will uh, test these at uh, an average distance of five centimeters from the body. So try and keep them away if you can. Uh, other hazards we have in the house, we have our uh, cordless phones. Uh, these are the same frequency, 2.4 gigahertz, as uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and your kitchen microwave. And the signals in these are transmitting all the time. You know, you get more exposure from one of these in the house than if you had a cell mast in the back of your garden. Uh, and when you're using the handset, the levels uh, you're exposing yourself to are similar or greater than your cell phone. Um, so if you're the sort of person that works in an office or if you're on the phone a lot, I always advise people to get rid of one of these and then get a wired landline if you can. Uh, Bluetooth headsets, uh, music headphones, speakers, uh, smart TVs, games consoles, smart watches and Fitbits all use the same frequency. Um, some of these, like the, the smart watches, are transmitting on Wi-Fi uh, and on the 4G uh, and on the Bluetooth all at the same time. And then your phone, of course, is receiving all this. So you've got two sources of radiation going on your body if you're using one of these. Uh, I used to have a Bluetooth headset in the car, uh, one of those that you know clipped on the, the visor. But it's like two inches away from my forehead. And you know I was constantly getting headaches before I figured out what it was. So uh, uh, needless to say, I got rid of that. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, again, 2.4 gigahertz, also 5.8 gigahertz. So you can see the frequencies are getting higher. Again, the signal is transmitting all the time. Wi-Fi has a very distinct pulsing signal. It's kind of like a motorboat sound. It's a da 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 da, -da when you hear it. Uh, and that really entrains your, your brain. Um, I first started researching this when I was uh, in Dublin uh, when I was staying in a, a bed and breakfast hotel. Uh, it was a really comfortable room, nice and dark. It was a very quiet street. I did not sleep a wink for three nights I was there. And I couldn't work out what was going on uh, until I was checking out. And I found out that the, the Wi-Fi uh, router was on the ceiling right underneath my bed. So, you know, this, I really can't sleep when Wi-Fi is on. So I don't have mine switched on in the house unless I need to uh, update my phone or something. Smart meters, again, uh, 2.4 gigahertz frequency, transmits regular high intensity pulses around the, around the clock. It's using your home Wi-Fi as well. Um, this is a whole other talk, in fact, but you know, basically smart meters are not good things. Um, but let's get into 5G. Uh, now, I'm not an advocate for 5G at all, but at the moment, I think there is such a lot of uh, conspiracy theory and uh, fear-based reactions to it that it does need put into some sort of perspective. You know, 5G is not a thing in itself. It's, it's basically, it's, it's a discussion document. It's a set of protocols that the, the, the phone company said, this is how we're going to improve things in the future. So there's a lot of different things that have to mesh together before 5G is fully implemented. And it's very early days at the moment. Um, here's some examples. Um, these are what 5G transmitters look like. Well, these little small square boxes you see, uh, these are the sort of 5G ones here. So it promises uh, more data much faster than 4G. Uh, lower latency, that's the signal lag, the time it takes between the phone and the, the transmitter. Uh, beam forming antenna. So instead of like broadcasting everywhere and having to bounce off walls, uh, as the current transmitters do, 5G can actually focus the beam to directly to your phone. So this means that uh, you're liable to have a stronger beam than you would normally. And of course, it's doing this to everybody else as well. So there'll be quite a lot of uh, beams passing through you that are stronger than you're normally getting. Uh, multiple input and output, um, massive MIMO it's called. 
uh, I think the specification is they have to uh, be able to cope with a million, a million subscribers every kilometer. And it's able to switch seamlessly between frequencies. Now, all the frequencies that we've got at the moment um, and all the old television frequencies have been allocated to this as well. So 5G basically covers every frequency that we've got uh, from the 800 megahertz up through the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth and everything and beyond. And it's these higher frequencies that are uh, both give us the potential for a lot more bandwidth, but are also quite scary. So um, yeah, this is a bit technical, but basically 5G uh, at the moment is operating below six gigahertz. The technology doesn't exist yet to go any higher than that. Um, it will give us uh, higher exposure levels. The um, protocols allow up to 300 gigahertz, and that's into the sub-millimeter wave bands, as they call it. But at the moment, in the, certainly in the UK, uh, it's under six gigahertz, so you can call it 4.5 G, if you like. Um, they've said they're not going to go any higher in the UK of 24 gigahertz. I believe North America has said 28 gigahertz. Beyond that, you need so many more transmitters. You're talking millions more transmitters, so one in every street corner. Um, you know, it's really a massive financial investment. And at the moment, that's just not there. So we're still four or five years off from that, I think. Um, airport body detectors, they use 20 to 38 gigahertz. You've probably heard of this guy, the uh, active denial system that the military have denied, 95 gigahertz. But it's all about the power levels here. You know, these are all technically 5G bands, but it depends on the power we're using. Um, the higher frequency means there's a smaller wavelength. This means it has more of an effect on small creatures and insects. Um, the millimeter wave bands where you have such high uh, bandwidth, we need these for um, autonomous cars. This is why they're so keen to put it, uh, put it in. Uh, but then in general, the, the 4G is still going to provide the general cover. They will be asking you to put a 5G router in your home. Uh, I would avoid that. Um, you know, this is to power all the Internet of Things devices that we're going to have in the home. Uh, the irony of the small cell deployment is we need millions of these to get this, uh, uh, the coverage because the higher frequencies don't travel very far. So this is the danger. You know, there's going to be one of these in every street lamp. Um, but the irony is uh, they need fiber optic to do all this, to feed all the network. So why not just give us fiber in the home? Uh, here's some transmitters. I took a picture of this last year. This was in uh, Singapore. Uh, this one is in Sydney. And this is just uh, one on a utility pole. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the, the signs here, you know, this is a hazard area. Do not approach within two meters. I could have jumped up and touched that. You know, that's just above head height. Uh, very quickly, I'm nearly finished now. Uh, this is the normal propagation of uh, 4G, 3G mast, which is designed to go largely horizontal. Uh, the 5G ones, you have this beam forming technology where it will sweep and actually focus directly to your phone. And uh, they can be so small. Here's an average uh, multiple antenna, which will fit inside a phone. You can have 64 of these aerials inside your phone. You know, the technology is getting so small. So what can we do about it? Uh, I think the same is, uh, is just minimize your exposure to these radiations is always my first line of defense. You know, we're being bombarded with all this. Uh, we can do whatever we can to try and reduce our exposure to these. So minimize your phone use, uh, keep your Wi-Fi off, except when you're using it. That does massively improve your battery life. Uh, keep your phone in flight mode if you can, although that's pretty much an expensive pager if you do that. Uh, you can use speaker phones or air tube headsets. This is an air tube headset I'm using. So the last couple of uh, few inches of it are just a, a tube. So there's no wires going into your ear. So the signal doesn't get into your ear. Uh, use a wired landline phone. Aim for home fiber connections, not 5G routers. Uh, you can use ethernet or um, power line LAN instead of your Wi-Fi. Power line is where you get adapters that plug into your mains and it sends the internet through your mains wiring. Avoid Bluetooth headsets and other wearables if you can. And you can use shielding materials, you know, those phone sleeves, carbon paint, bed canopies, all these things you can get. Reduce, remove, shield. Uh, we'll just skip that one. Can we do anything with our dowsing? Um, the RF radiation may affect the dowsing ability because of the effects on our brain waves. 
So we can use our dowsing to check that. We can assess the problems and test solutions whether they're going to work for us. Uh, dows to find what's a safe distance from the mast. You know, dows to find what's a safe distance from your, your microwave, uh, your Wi-Fi router. Um, I know a lot of dows are saying we can harmonize the radiation with our pendulum. Um, I don't find it works for me because I can still put my meter on it and it's still reading the same. Uh, likewise, we can get shungite, uh, you know, organite, things like that. Uh, here's a little uh, shungite pyramid, which you can put on your router. Um, I don't have a great deal of faith of, in that to completely reduce this because the radiations are so strong. But hey, I do have one. <laughs> so, um, okay, very, that was a very brief overview. Um, more in my book if, you're, uh, if you want to dig into that. Okay, thank you. I shall stop the share. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So now our panelists, I'm going to invite the three of you to discuss among yourselves the issues that you uh, might wanna ask each other questions or um, identify particular questions that cross over among all three of you to two presentations are excellent. And I, I think we don't know enough yet. We are on the brink of an age of technology, um, which is the Aquarian age, which is the practical over the sentimental. And we are going into a very high tech time and we're, you know, we're only in the very beginning of it the last couple of hundred years. So we may not know how to do some of these things that are coming or how to correct them or protect ourselves, whatever. We will be learning more. We, our advancement is going to be huge so that we will have some of the things that you only read about in comic strips. Um, this is what we do. We progress as, as uh, human beings, as part of the divine, it's constantly creating more. It's always more. So we will have more information on say 5G or um, to uh, reverse some of the damage we have done to the earth. But we don't know it at this time, but we were exploring just like this pandemic, we don't know, it's all happening in real time. We're trying to figure out a vaccine. We're trying to figure out a treatment in real time. And that's what we're going to be doing for a lot of the technology that's coming down the road is, is how do we, um, advance ourselves in the age where we're, our, it's all about the brain and it's all, it's very much the focus on the brain over the next couple of thousand years so and that's the age of aquarius where we deal with the mind and invention and the practical over the sentimental that's why you see a different type of architecture it's steel and glass and cement it's no longer gingerbread so we will find ways to do this right now we may not know, but we will know how to reverse and how to protect. But it's not here yet. It doesn't mean it won't be here. It doesn't mean it can't happen. It's just not here yet. Yeah, I think that's great, Gail. I totally um, agree with you on that. And one of the things you said uh, in your talk, which I really resonated with, was don't give in to fear. You know, there's, right. there is so much fear and um, conspiracy theory and disinformation going on about 5G. Um, somebody in the chat here said, are you advocating for 5G? Well, no, I'm not, but I am advocating for us to be educated about what's coming, you know, which is what I try and do. Um, I don't think it's a good thing. Uh, I think it's inevitable that we're going to be going that way. So I think it's important that we step out of ourselves, as Maya said earlier, and, uh, you know, educate. Let's learn about this stuff and see what we can do with it. I would agree. We're, we're, that's why we have so much work going on with the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia, and everything else. We're just finding out how that all works yeah. and what, it, what affects it. So this is where we're headed um, in the age of awareness, rationality, and away from superstition and fear, which was the other age we were coming out of. Anybody else want to say anything besides me? I, um, well, Amaya, do you want to comment? I just want to say thank you both for the for your um, really informative and nice presentations and and for the five five G talk. Yeah, I guess I can just offer my personal perspective that um, I feel that 
I feel I'm sensitive definitely to, I'm not sure which waves are exactly or how to isolate them, but what's going on in the house. I'm not even talking about, of course, 5G because it's not here yet. But uh, as I find myself using more technology, especially with, well, I was kind of using a lot of computer and the phone when I was trying to put the summit together. I became so sensitive in my fingertips where I would just wake up in the morning and it, I just hurt. It was a physical sensation. My fingers hurt, like touching the phone, I mean, even touching my laptop. But, you know, and I had no solution for it at that point. I just, you know, I had a date and the time and I had to make that happen. But knowing, you know, th that led me into, and you've, uh, offer thank you for like different solutions of how, how, how to protect yourself from this you know radiation so uh, i would definitely be looking into more more of that technology i know i know i know of one it's it's rather expensive it's a few thousand dollars and i just i'm not at a level where i want to invest in it yet but it might be necessary in the future and as Gail said, you know, have have your plans, A, B, C, D, whatever, <laughs> because things are coming and we need to prepare. So, yeah, thank you both. Yeah, a lot of the um, the, the remedies you can buy are quite expensive. You know, there are these uh, room harmonizers and, uh, you know, apartment harmonizers and things that you can buy, but they do cost several thousand dollars. Uh, so it's, it's questionable if you want to go down that way. And how do you know if it's going to work for you if you don't get a chance to test it, you know? Um, and there are these, you know, the stickers you can get for your cell phone. I mean, by all means, try them out. But, you know, I think we can use our dowsing to see if it's going to be, um, if it's going to work, if it's going to be any good for us. Um, uh, I mean, I'm a bit very, cynical. That's a yes. very good point, uh, Graham, that we can use our dowsing. I have discovered that when I ask much more specific questions with my dowsing, I can get information about how close as you suggested, how close or how far apart, you know, away to stand from something. Um, there's, I think there's a real practical uh, application of our dowsing to this very unknown uh, radiation suit that you were talking about. And um, what troubles me the most is that uh, I don't, want to go into discussions where we're trying to figure it out when we don't have enough skill to do that yet and getting into fear and and the conspiracy um, that grows out of that fear. Uh, and it, it's really hard. I think it's extremely hard right now. Um, so many of the things that you described in the um, uh, things that happened to the body are so, from, from radiation, are so similar to what we experience, uh, what we see happening with the virus and, mm -hmm. um, and, and the reaction to that and the different body. I was, I was amazed to see how it all kind of fit together in terms of, you know, really gyrating all of that energy that our body is trying to handle. And for dowsers, I think we have it. We have the ability to do what I call smart sensing. We can ask our body, how far away do we need to stand? Yeah. You know, do we need to buy this object or that one for the highest and best good for ourselves, for our families? I think that this is the era, and I think Gail talked about it, um, where we are going to be more intuitive, that that is the direction we're going out of fear, into love, into humanity, and being in that quiet place to know, is it safe? Is it not safe? And um, I feel really passionate that we share as much as we can with each other about that level of knowing that we've discovered in our dowsing and can apply to what's going on. Any other thoughts? Amy, yes, I, I have a, uh, this is Barry in Tucson. My question to Graham uh, is with this 5G or with much of these radio frequencies in the electromagnetics, um, what about uh, the, the cobalt blue, um, 
kind of surrounding or uh, mitigating uh, these these radiations in that way, or or what other uh, ways might we have, which is um, actually dowsing. Well, I mean, I think the first line of defense is, as I said, is always to reduce, remove, or shield uh, within the home. You know, you need to make your home, and particularly your bedroom, uh, as, as neutral a space, as free from these radiations as you can. You know, I mean, I have clients who, who sleep with their iPhones under their pillow with the alarm on and the charger in. You know, um, people are just not educated about this sort of stuff. So you have to, um, I mean, I, I will always advocate that clients get rid of uh, a, a, a cordless phone, replace it with a landline if they can. Uh, or there are a couple of models you can get, which are low emission ones, low radiation models. Um, there's the Gigaset range, and I think the Panasonic ones now do that as well. So, you know, people are becoming more aware of these, and uh, manufacturers are catering to that. Uh, in terms of the sort of uh, the widgets you can get, the, the devices, um, it's a big market out there. You have to really trust your dowsing, I think, or, or try and get one on, on trial to see if, if it works for you. You know, um, some of them are, I find are very hit and miss. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's various things. Some of them are like Schumann resonance uh, generators. Um, they have, there's, yeah, there's loads of makes. The problem I find with these is it's like taking an aspirin to mask a headache. You know, it's not, it's not curing the problem. You're masking the symptoms in, in a lot of cases. Uh, but this is where our dowsing comes in handy. You know, we can, we can douse. You know, how effective is this going to be for me? Is it going to do the job? Um, you can try uh, changing the radiation quality, like Raymond Grace or Joey Korn would tell you that you can, you know, you can um, uh, neutralize the, the detrimental frequencies within the radiation to make it either neutral or beneficial to yourself. By all means, try it. Uh, I find it doesn't work for me because, you know, as I said, I still put the meter on it and it's still reading. So, you know, I get this with Shungite as well. Um, people say, oh yeah, Shungite changes the spin of the the electron or something, so it's not harmful. It still shows in the meter, so, you know, who's right? Um, for me, you know, these are very, very um, intense energies compared with the subtle earth energies that we use in dowsing, so it's hard for me to see how we can get rid of it uh, completely, you know, so I just have to try and remove it from your, your immediate environment, um, use shielding materials if you can, campaign to get your phone mass removed or, you know, campaign against any 5G mass that we're planning to put up in your neighborhood. Um, don't get a 5G router. You know, if you, if you have a, a, a router, sorry, you guys say router, if router. you have a router in your house, uh, connect to it with ethernet cables and disable the Wi-Fi. You know, there's, there's all these uh, methods you can do to reduce your exposure. All right, more questions, comments uh, to our panelists. Hi, Graham. Hey. Hi. Um, how can you tell if the Wi-Fi or 5G is affecting your dowsing? Um, well, you would notice uh, if your dowsing has suddenly become inaccurate for some reason or you're unable to douse. Uh, I mean, if you're going, do you use a, a dowsing protocol before you start? Do you do, you do yes. the three questions, can I, may I, should I? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, you might find you're getting a, a no to that and you can't think of a reason why. Um, I haven't been getting a no to it, but um, I've been wondering what's going on because I'm having reactions to foods and I'm trying to find out which foods they are. I, I start swelling up like crazy and I can't get accurate answers on it. So I, that's why I was wondering if this might be part of it. Okay, yeah, it could be, could be, yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be a reaction to the Wi-Fi that's causing you to have the reaction to the food. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Thank you, Graham, for that informative presentation demystifying the science and hazards of 5G technology.